Thank you, Emily. Our fifth and final presenter this morning is Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Gill. Jonathan is a qualified robotic engineer specializing in mechatronic systems, starting out in the offshore industry, supervising the ROV team in harsh underwater environments. Now working at Harper Adams University as a researcher, his main focus is aerial drone systems and their role within agriculture with operation, design, and programming. The hands-free Hector, which has been the boldest attempt fusing automation, agronomy, and agriculture together, operating drones and drone technology to achieve a world's first. Jonathan's topic is how do we embrace automation in agriculture? And he has been kindly supported by the Worshipful Co Company of Farmers and Savills with McDonald's restaurants. So conference, please welcome Jonathan. Good morning, Your Highness, Lords, ladies, gentlemen, and of course, Nuffield scholars. My name is Jonathan Gill. And I've had a fantastic introduction, and there's no better way to do it than being known as Drone Boy. So let's get into a brief, brief soupçon of what my presentation is about. My personal Nuffield journey took to many places around the world. I'm really, well, very amazed the different countries I've managed to achieve to go to, all of which are based up on the side there. And I was also very lucky to go on a GFP, allowing me to travel to ever more places, making me realize that this world is getting very small for me to actually understand areas and understand what's changing around the world, especially with technology. So I've gone to a lot of places, and it's been a really eye-opening experience. So there are many types of automation, and I think it's a really good way just to go into the Collins Dictionary to make sure everybody understands exactly where I'm standing from. So the use of methods for controlling industrial processes automatically especially by electronic controlled systems, often reducing manpower. And we've got a number of systems just being shown there. First of all, we've got a robotic arm, something I'm very familiar with. Um, we've got a tractor there without a cab, something completely different. So a little bit different there. And we've got the mobile phone, something that is completely revolutionizing our capabilities of what we're doing. And I'm not going to necessarily talk about it because I'd have to change into a pair of jeans and into a polo neck just to talk about smartphone apps. But um, <laughs> everybody's got one. Everybody can see that there's a big change that actually involves that and how we're going to fuse it all together. I've broken it down into two different areas. Drones and autonomous farm vehicles. These are my exciting areas of interest, and I really, well... I dream about them at night. It's really quite sad, but it's true. So it's creating a completely new industry sector. Around the world, autonomous farm agricultural vehicles are starting to be seen everywhere. And they're not just the standard vehicles you would see. Well, there's two systems there, which have got large wheels at the back, small wheels at the front, designed to have an implement based at the back of them. But the world is changing to think, well, it's not all about getting a person based onto a vehicle in the first place. If you don't have to have a cab in the first place, it means that you can completely think outside the box. Therefore, vehicles such as the CDOT run system there, a automatic seeder, and the swarm robot system just based up to the top there, both really interesting design systems designed to work within an agricultural arable environment and get work done. And it doesn't involve a person having to be sat on that seat well, for the 16 hours a day to make sure that we get our seed in the ground, especially challenging this time of year. Um, systems will involve us having to have a blend in of a different, smaller tractor, allowing us to sit on the vehicle and allow us to get to and from, especially at the moment. I don't foresee us changing to completely different systems within the next couple of years. However, there are some big changes coming. Small robot company, just proving it's not all the way around the world, we've got some fantastic innovation coming out of the UK, which means that we're really understanding the farming industry might have a different chance to start thinking about farming in a completely different way. And, well, here's some innovators out there just doing it, and there's Clive and myself just actually meeting them, understanding that things don't necessarily have to come out of the same original ideas in the first place. And will this all happen? I really hope so. Systems are working out there. The Roboti from AgroIntelli doesn't look like a tractor anymore, does it? Completely different, but it's doing exactly the same job. 
It's a system there designed with four little wheels with a direct drill planting in the center there, allowing us to actually get our crop in exactly where we want it in the first place. It's really important to actually understand that things are starting to change around the world. And of course, going all the way around the world allows me to explain certain things about size. Perfect place to actually understand all about that is going to Japan and understanding that things don't have to be so big. Let's start thinking a little bit smaller and actually understand, well, we maybe don't have to have big Julie tractors everywhere. So, this is where it really comes into it. And I was looking back through to produce some pictures for my presentation. I was thinking, well, first doctor. Yeah, that was me. That's me, age nine, really proud. I've made my new radio control plane. And there's me when I'm, like, nearly 30. I've made my new radio control plane. <laughs> and there's me when I'm a little bit older. And I've got another large plane. And I'm really proud. And these thinking, yes, I've got it. I've got the next generation for automation, running for agriculture. I'm going to start a new business. It's going to be amazing. However, first adoption doesn't necessarily create you the best business advantage, because everything nowadays is about drones. God, who'd have thought it? So completely different systems out there. And to explain things, this is a drone. Just brought one along with me, just because this is my daily job. I fly one of these systems quite nice to actually have. Has anybody in the audience got one of these? Hands up, let's see. Great, there's loads of people. Clive, I can see your hands up there. Another gentleman there. Yeah, drone systems. Really useful. It's kind of known as an aerial camera system. It allows us to go through and take an aerial view of the sky. It's quite good, because I would like to be able to fly, but I can't. So um, this system will allow me to do that. So little spinny rotors allow us to actually hold up into the air and actually work. That's really good for some points of view, but what else can they do for us? Therefore, let's not break it now, um, they can be gain ever larger. So spray drones is not a new technology. It's been around for over 25 years, based over in Japan, from the helicopter-shaped large um, Yamaha R-Max there, doing a spray job. And now with the new technology of multi-rotor drone systems, we've got the capability of starting to make things look completely different from what a standard helicopter was. We've got two systems from DJI and uh, XAG. Both spray drone systems, based to work over in China, incredibly good at their jobs in the first place. We've got Volocopter now being displayed with, um, at Agritechnica with John Deere, just to show that there's new technologies coming out there, allow us to spray different areas of the fields, and allow us to get more precise application in comparison to going down the standard pathways of normal systems. Just to prove, this is one of the drone systems that I've actually got working within my field. It is a large drone system. It weighs 25 kilograms. It's spraying exactly where I want it to. It's <coughs> controlled from a mobile phone. I don't have to be a drone operator. I'm a spray operator. Allow me to target my spray exactly where I want it to go. Absolutely fantastic system. Why are we going to change it all up? First of all, standard methodology is that we drive <coughs> up and down in a field. Maybe we have a targeted capability of spraying and turning on and off to the areas of red to actually control. However, if we have a better starting mechanism of allowing us to spray, a drone system can fly wherever we want it to go. And if we only want to target the areas of control, we only have to fly there, allowing us to become even more efficient in the capability of getting that spray medium to the areas that really <coughs> require it. Drones don't have to just be used for spraying. They don't have to be used for aerial inspection. They can be used for other exciting things, too. So really excited that I was on the Times there just talking about drone systems, but it wasn't necessarily my work. This is a video from Wojciech. He is the Flying Shepherd. And like the Pied Piper of Hamelin, these sheep are not scared of the drone. They know that they're going to get moved to new pasture. And they are following very happily just to actually go to the new pasture from the drone system. And I didn't believe it until I actually went there to go and see. So completely different from the idea of scaring sheep with a sheepdog. 
Sheep will quite happily just follow, a little bit slower, at their own pace, but it really works. And there's different ideas out there just to actually make sure that, well, we don't think in the box. There are some recommendations, and I've got to quickly rattle through these. Regula regulators need to have commitment to encourage innovation. And there are safety and benefit. Well, this needs to actually be done when there's safety and environmental benefits to actually come. That's from, for the government. Second one, the UK needs to keep pace with other countries. We need to have heavy investment and fair connectivity strategy from the government to ensure equal and rural coverage. All those mobile phones of all of you, we need to get connectivity wherever we are in the rural environment. It's incredibly important. And for us to actually focus on technology on the quick wins. Make sure that we're actually focusing on the things that really make it a financial benefit. And the last one. The fourth industrial revolution for agriculture is happening right now. Farmers who do not adopt and embrace will be left behind. My future, I will keep on practicing what I preach. The hands-free farm is my next development. I will invite anybody who wants to come along and see what's going on at Harper Adams University to show how autonomous agriculture is working and how we're actually changing things. I want to thank everybody, but just because I'm a drone operator, this is where things get a bit exciting. And to make sure people understand technology, two days' time, you've got to make sure there's my safety notice. <laughs> right, let's turn this little bad boy on. This is a little bit smaller than the ones I use normally. I want to say thank you to everybody, including the people who have paid attention to me, my friends, family, all of which have been instrumental in keeping, allowing me to do all of this amazing work. Let's just connect. Let's see that little light go green. Things can all go wrong when people look at things. <laughs> Ta-da! Right, okay, let's launch the mission of Take a Bow. <laughs> <laughs>